if you're giving and it's not coming back to you, after a while, there's a lot of fatigue around this, right? All of a sudden you're going, wait, I'm exhausted. I keep giving and giving and giving and it's not coming back. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing world changers in the creative, social impact, and vegan spaces. If you like what you hear on this episode, you're going to want to check out the bonus mini episode that you can access if you DM me at Isolde T on Instagram and you let me know you want it. You'll get access to bonus episodes, new art, my latest writing, and other fun benefits. And now, let's get to the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. In yesterday's episode, I talked about the psychology of reciprocity when you're looking at it from the perspective of, hey, I've got my boundaries and I am a matcher, according to Adam Grant. As I mentioned yesterday, there are givers, there are takers, and there are matchers. Givers give, 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 takers take, 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 and matchers give, but expect reciprocity. I love that notion. And yet, in thinking about it since then, I've sort of gone into a slightly different direction. And the direction is this. Who are those people who go, oh, no, I am just going to look at the universe as a, an abundant place and I'm going to go, I'm going to give, 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 and then I'll get in other ways. So you're not necessarily going to get back reciprocity from the actual person you gave to. Instead, you're going to leave it up to the universe, to the powers that be, if you follow Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and 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 sort of expect or think that all will be well because it will come back to you when it is time for it to come back to you. That's a very Zen kind of attitude, one that I would like to have, honestly, because I do have this deep mindfulness practice, but I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't have that perspective, right? There are people out there who who kind of are going, yeah, fundamentally, I think everything is all abundance and bounty. And so therefore, I am free to just give, give, give because I get back in other ways. But what happens if you don't, right? What happens if you are the person who gives, gives, gives? And like I said in yesterday's episode, but you don't get reciprocity back and you kind of maybe start waiting for somebody, some universal something or other to happen, and it just doesn't. How do you get okay with that? How do you get okay with not getting back the things that you've put out, right? If you've put out kindness and generosity and wisdom and added value to everybody, and you're not getting anything back, how do you get to to a place of equilibrium with that? It's not an easy thing, right? For me, and I, this, I, I'm, I'm being very honest with you, I struggle with that because I have spent a lot of my time give, 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 giving, and then people have gone, oh, well, I just sort of expected that that's what you do. I'm not sure why, but there it is. I feel like I'm <laughs> having a, a solo therapy session here today. I'm really not. It's something that I think probably a lot of us are thinking about in this paradigm of keep giving and then eventually somehow things will happen that you will start getting. And by the way, inherent to that, and maybe I'm not done with talking about reciprocity, but inherent to that, give, 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 give in your business is that you have to have some sort of side hustle. You have to have some way of paying the rent, right? I remember Gary Vaynerchuk, to come back to him, used to say, oh, you know, live in your parents' basement. Uh, What if you are not able to do that? And, And or what if you are someone like me? I'm older. I am not. Uh, 18 anymore. I'm not 25 anymore. So uh, that becomes a different kettle of corn, right? How are you going to minimize all of your expenses if, if you have them? If you are at a, at a place in your life where, yeah, I, I probably at 55, other than living with my husband, I probably don't want to live with a bunch of roommates. I would. I have friends that I would love to live with again that I used to live with. But they're also in the place in their lives where they're not doing that anymore, right? They have their own homes. They have their own stuff. So you have to figure out how to budget for these changes that you want to make in your life. And if you cannot budget for, I'm going to live in my mom's basement, then you have to budget for, I'm going to live in an apartment or a house or whatever, and I'm going to try and do this business. And the problem with that, of course, is that it it is not an easy thing 
to get to a place where you're like, oh, I can afford to run this business while I'm paying all my bills, right? Maybe you have a partner who is able to float you until you get your feet on the ground and really get get your business going. But if you don't, then you end up in this place of like, okay, so how do I budget for this business that I want to start or this business that I've already started and I'm still trying to get off the ground, right? If you have adult responsibilities, if you're not 22 and okay, if you're 22 and you're listening to this and you're going, no, 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 I pay all my bills. I I apologize. If you're not 14, there, there, there are entrepreneurs out there who are 14 years old. If you're not 14, and are, can still live in your mom's basement or still have your bedroom, you know, your teenage bedroom, you have to budget for this. And sometimes that does mean you have to work extra hard. I remember when I started making the transition from working at NASA to being a full-time professional musician, I was working 100 hours a week easy because between teaching my students, my work at NASA and gigging, I had two and a half full-time jobs easily, and I did it because I loved it, but I also had the energy to do it. Now, I don't have the energy to do it. So part of how I have to deal with the fact that there's no reciprocity or there is not enough reciprocity to keep my business on the ground, uh, I have to handle that, right? As someone who is working through all of this, I have to figure out for myself, what do I need in order to get by while I'm building this business, while I'm growing this business? Do I need to spend time doing a job for a year, a day job for a year so that I can put away a ton of money, as much money as I can, you know, live super cheap, as super cheap as I can. And do I need to pay off debts? Do I need to pay down my credit cards? What are the things that I need to do in order to be able to eventually put money into my business? Now, there are some people who go the get a loan route. They go the venture capitalist route. There are angel investors out there who are looking for businesses. And that's great if that's who you are and if that's what you can do. And if you've got if you've got a pitch that's got a great hook and, and you go on Shark Tank and they want to fund your business, that's awesome. But if you are not that person, if you're not on Shark Tank, if Mark Cuban doesn't know or Barbara uh, Corcoran doesn't know who you are, then, hey, you're not going to be that person. So how do you do it? First of all, you do have to get into the mindset of someone who deserves to be paid for what you're making. And I know I'm supposed to be talking about being Zen about this in this episode, but frankly, one of the things that helps you be Zen is if you feel like the work you're putting in is balanced by the things you're getting back, right? That's the thing about being Zen is that ultimately it's about equilibrium. It's not just about put out, put out, put out, put out, and then if it doesn't come back to you, you're cool with it and move on. Uh, that, that may be a flavor of Zen, I guess. But for me, some of what this has to be is if if I'm putting out a lot of energy and a lot of resources and a lot of wisdom and a lot of value and I'm not getting anything in return, is it worth it to me to keep doing it over the long haul? Now, for some people, they'll say yes. For me, I have to say no. I have to either sort of change course and go, okay, I'm going to do something else that might allow me to keep living in my favorite city that might allow me to keep paying my bills and and keeping my cats in kibble. I have to do that. I have to make those choices. If you are entitled, no, that's not what I want to say. If you feel entitled to reciprocity, if you feel entitled to fair compensation for what you're doing, that's magic because there's so many people out there who are walking around going, oh, no, I have to give away all the stuff. And then if it comes back to me, great. But if it doesn't, that's totally cool, too. No, I'm sorry. It's not cool. It's not cool. It is not cool to just give away everything you've got. It's not. I would love to say, yes, it is, because we've got this paradigm that everybody's like, give it away, give it away. And no. And then there's the, the sort of uh, paradigm that says give away the what, but not the how. Right. So I can tell you what you need to do, but I'm not going to tell you how you need to do it. So the what is free, but the how is what's going to cost you twelve hundred dollars to join a mastermind or whatever. Right. I those those ways of doing things, those techniques don't work for me because I don't like them. This is not because I don't I can't do them. It's because I find them problematic and for me, for, for the way I do things, having a membership group or something like that. And, you know, I'm going to talk about this for a second. So, uh, and Alan, if you're listening to this, I still use this as an example when I work with companies. When I'm, when I'm invited to do a workshop, I talk about this very thing about starting 
a group that is going to be an accountability group or a creativity group or something that will that you can be with other people who are trying to do what you're trying to do in a way that feels good and substantive where you can help each other. So when I first started the Vegan Writers of New York City group, I met with my now dear friend Alan. He came to the he and I were in the first group meeting together. We were the only two who made it. And I showed him uh, a deck of cards that I had created about pro- with word prompts on them to help my writing. And I and when I do my creativity and your my tell your story better workshops, we use I use the same cards. And he said, "Oh, so this is all you you just want me to buy the cards?" And it had not occurred to me to do that. Right? I started the group. I don't want to monetize it. I don't want to have any money changing hands at all about it because that's not what the group is for. For me, the group is for improving my writing while and helping other people improve their writing. Hopefully I'm doing that too, that we're helping each other while supporting vegan restaurants and cafes in New York City. That was the whole point of me starting the group. But having somebody immediately go, oh, you know, you're you're just trying to, and I know he was kidding. And Alan, again, if you're listening to this, this is not me. I am not pushing a button here at all. I want to illustrate that we are all walking around with that kind of fatigue now. Many of us are kind of going, oh yeah, this is what's going on. We have a problem. And the problem is that everybody's got this notion that we're just supposed to give and it's not coming back, right? If you're giving and it's not coming back to you, after a while, there's a lot of fatigue around this, right? All of a sudden you're going, wait, I'm exhausted. I keep giving and giving and giving and it's not coming back. Now, you might hear from Gary Vanderchuk, well, then you need to look and see what your audience wants. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a huge part of this is that maybe you are not giving the you're giving right. You're giving and and you're (laughs) running marathons and wringing yourself dry to give to people. But what if what you're giving is not what they want or what they need? Right. So you hear me talk about Ikigai all the time. What is it that your audience wants? What is it that your customers want? What is it that your clients want? You have to find that out. Do some market research. Talk to people who are your ideal client, the person who would look at what you're doing and go, yes. And and here's what I tell people when I talk to them, when I talk to, for example, talent agents or uh, event planners, I never try to pitch the event planner I'm talking to for market research. Never, ever, 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 ever try to do that. Instead, say this. I'm not trying to pitch you. I'm trying to figure out how to pitch you. That's a very different thing, right? You're not trying to pitch the person. You're trying to figure out what is the best way to pitch them so that it can extrapolate perhaps to other people, right? So be honest, have integrity around this. Don't try to pitch someone when you're doing market research. Instead, ask them the questions that are gonna get you the answers that are gonna give you what you need to know in order to pitch other people successfully. And frankly, if your pitch is awesome and they see you succeeding other places with it, that initial person you talk to might just wanna book you too. That's another thing to think about is like, if you, if what you want is reciprocity and you're not getting it, you might have to change what you're doing. You might have to do some market research and figure out how to do it differently, what to do differently, and or you could theoretically go like my friend Al Petaway, who's a Grammy Award winning guitarist goes, you know what? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and eventually I'll find my audience. And that works for him because he's amazing. It won't necessarily work for the rest of us. So if you're not ready to just give, 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 give with no expectation of reciprocity, you're going to have to look at after a while, you're going to have to look at what it is you're giving and what it is that you're getting back. Do an assessment and be objective about it. Assess what you're giving versus what you're getting back. If there is too much imbalance, if there's no no equilibrium there, if you're giving way more than you're getting back, you need to figure out, A, if it's okay with you, B, if it's not okay, what are you going to do about it? C, if what you want to do about it is get to a place where you are getting reciprocity, figure out your boundaries first, what would make you comfortable, and then change up what you're doing so that what you're doing is going to get you the reciprocity that you wanted to begin with. All righty. I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. This is a deep topic and I know I'm going to keep coming back to it because I think the paradigm that we've been in isn't one that's necessarily going to work for everybody. There are some fields, there are some business fields 
where it won't work. If you're an artist, for example, I know I've already said goodbye or started saying goodbye, but this is important. If you're an artist, for example, and you give away stuff for free, you can hope that somebody will go, oh my goodness, I love your digital art. What I really want is for you to paint a mural in my restaurant that happened to someone. I know that happened to someone. I forget his name. He's actually a friend of Gary Vanderchuk's. Uh, and that's really cool. But we're not all going to have that kind of, ha ha, we're not all going to be Lana Turner getting discovered at a soda fountain, right? We're not. So you need to figure out for yourself what you want out of your interactions. If reciprocity is key, then you're going to have to figure out how to get it. If you're okay with not having it be reciprocal, then your options are much more numerous and that can be okay too. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast, reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind.